Welcome back everybody to another Body Bags Review and this week's theme is uh, vampires. Uh, there's tons and tons of vampire films out there so there's lots of choices for everybody. And the one I'm going to talk about today is one that kind of got under everybody's skin about a year or so ago. Um, and that is Fright Night 2 uh, and The New Blood. And the reason this got under everybody's skin is because um, this one is not the... Uh, this isn't the one that came out back in like the in the late '80s, the uh, the sequel to the original. This is the sequel to the remake, and it actually is a remake in itself. Basically, it takes the same characters from the from the remake from the first uh, the original film, and it puts them in new situations. Even though it's called Fright Night Two, so it should have just been another Fright Night movie instead of just being called like Part Two. I don't understand why they would do that, considering it has the exact same characters just played by different people. Uh, but this one, the character of Charlie Brewster, um, I think that's his name. Um, anyway, he um, he's off in college in some, um, oh, uh, why can I not think of this at all? <clears throat> but uh, Romania, there we go, the, where the vampires are. Uh, he's off in uh, Romania in college, and um, there's a teacher, there's a certain professor there, and the professor... Um, is the one that he thinks is the vampire. It plays out just like the exact same story as the remake, the exact same story as the original film, where there's one person that Charlie thinks is a vampire, and he has to try to prove it to everyone else uh, that he, that she or he is real. And uh, by doing so, he goes... Uh, what he does is he actually contacts uh, the guy who hosts a paranormal show who hunts you know, vampires on TV, uh, like Destination Truth or Ghost Hunters and stuff like that, that type of guy. Uh, to come and help him out to prove that this vampire is real. And the, obviously the guy doesn't believe him at first. And just like the uh, the remake in the original, he then comes to his senses when he sees something that he shouldn't see and starts believing and tries to help Charlie uh, fight fight the vampire. Uh, this one, um, the, the lady, the professor, uh, instead of just being just a regular vampire or anything like that, she, spoiler alert, but she turns out to be um, Elizabeth Bathory herself. Um, which is the original, I believe, the original vampire, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and um, so basically she is trying to kill Charlie and her, Charlie's girlfriend or soon-to-be girlfriend or whatever she really is to him. And she wants to turn her into a vampire. Um, and like the, the whole campus and everything, like the whole studio where the professor stays at, is basically like this underground layer that has been reconverted to make it look like a professor's study or something like that. It's really strange. Like, once you get inside, there's certain places you go that it starts turning into the whole like layer of, of where the vampire stays. Um, I actually didn't mind this. I thought it was actually a pretty decent film. Um, I know a lot of people gave it crap just because of the idea behind it being a remake of a remake of a remake or whatever, a remake of a remake or something like that. But um, I thought it was well done. I thought the acting was really solid. Um, I thought the story was pretty decent too, even though it was simple. It was still a really good story, um, and I thought that the the effects were okay. There was a little bit of uh, of CG and stuff throughout, especially with the blood. There's like a a pool of blood later on, and some of it to an extent is a little CGI, but a lot of it was actual, you know, water and food coloring and stuff. And I thought it was it, it looked fine. I didn't think that it was too bad on the CG. I thought it looked pretty good. Um, the guy who plays uh, Evil Ed in this one, I didn't really care for. I thought the guy who played him in the remake was good. Um, McLovin, I think it was his name. But um, the guy who uh, plays him in this one, is it's almost like he's trying to act too much like that guy from the remake. And it just it just doesn't work. Um, it just seems off. But uh, he's the only thing about the entire movie that I didn't really care for. And he's passable. Like, it didn't bother me too bad. Um... The special features on this has an audio commentary uh, with the director Eduardo Rodriguez um, and webisodes. I don't even know what they are. I never watched them. Um, and Dracula Revealed documentary, which I've never watched either. Um, but I, I say if you like vampire films, definitely check this one out. I thought it was a pretty solid vampire film. And don't be thrown off just because it's a remake of a remake. Um, I mean, it's even though it's a sequel, it's still a remake and it shouldn't be called a sequel. It's kind of stupid, but... Other than that, I, I have no problem with this movie. I thought it was actually pretty good, and I was very surprised by liking it because so many people had told me how bad and stupid it was. But um, maybe that's just me. I tend to like a lot of movies that everybody hates, and vice versa. So, But uh, I would say definitely give this a watch. Uh, Fright Night 2, The New Blood. 
Thanks, guys, for watching Vampire Week here on Body Bags. See you next week.